All right, we're upsizing it. I had a 3000 watt grow watt inverter and had about 800 watts of panels running into it. Today we're going with two kilowatts. So these are 230 watt modules and I wanted to show you the pieces that I chose throughout this build and why I chose them in case you wanted to use it uh, for some information on your build. These panels are set up three in series. The reason I did that is these are 37 volt open circuit panels. And the grow watt that I have can handle up to 145 volts open circuit input. So if you do three at 37, you're good. If you do four at 37, you're not good. That's over the 145. So three in series. So now that only gets us like 690 watts. Then what you gotta do, then you gotta run in parallel. So we've got two more strings here that we've got in parallel. And I'll show you how I connected them in parallel and how I'm pretty sure I did it safely. We'll see. Each of these, as you can see, are connected in series. We've got the, the wires nice and visible down here, not uh, tied up against the backs like they would be in a permit install. And the back two arrays here are running to some MC4 branch connectors. And you'll also see here that I ran some 15 amp fuses. And the reason that I did that is if you look on the label of these panels, it says that the max series fuse rating is 15 amps. So that tells me that if you're running two strings in parallel or two panels in parallel, they need a fuse because the short circuit current is 8.24 amps. And so two of those in parallel would be over 16 amps, which would be over their max fuse rating. So you cannot just simply branch two of these connect together in parallel because if you had a short circuit, they could be damaged, the panels themselves, or cause a fire. So this one, just a normal branch connector, as you can see, paralleling this string here with this string here. So we end up with about 100 volts open circuit with uh, about 16, 17 amps short circuit. Running through this branch connector, we've got the 15 amp fuse rated for 1,000 volts. Now, with this string here, we didn't do that. Uh, we didn't run a branch connector. We did run a fuse though, because back here at the combiner box, which is where you would typically have your 15 amp breaker. I only had 20 amp breakers available, which is why I ran my 15 amp fuses. If I replaced these with 15 amps, then it would be fine. But the problem with that is that I wouldn't be able to parallel the strings out in the field. I'd have to parallel them here. So I could add a third breaker. So three 15 amp breakers or even a 10 amp breaker. Uh, and then have each string come in individually, which is fine. We can do it either way. We could do fuses out in the field or we could do the breakers here. Um, these can be breakers or they could be fuses. I just went ahead and chose breakers because that means that I can flip them on and off and turn on certain strings, test things out and see how it's working. So right here we've got the uh, two strings of panels coming in on some 10 gauge wire. 10 gauge can easily handle 30 amps and we're pushing uh, maybe 16 across at max. So that 10 gauge will handle it fine. This is also a short run. Typically you would have the combiner box like up on the roof or at the ground mount array. So your run from your combiner box to your panels isn't typically very far. And then this set of wires runs to my single row of panels. So just three panels. So you've got about 700 watts coming in here and almost 1400 watts coming in here to the two individual breakers. Then from the combiner box, we come down to our inverter. And this is a grow watt. It is a 3000 watt inverter and it can do 3800 watts worth of solar. Uh, and it, the max, as I said earlier, 145 volts open circuit input. So I've got some 10 gauge uh, THHN wire here running through my conduit up to my combiner box. That's what gets my combined output from the panels up to the charge controller and 10 gauge seems really small I'm only running <clears throat> a few feet 40 amps for 10 gauge wire this is uh, THHN so it's the 90 degrees Celsius wire I do believe it can actually handle quite a bit and it's fine for what I'm running here because the 8 times 3 is under the 30 amps that is max for this scenario so I've got my PV wire coming into the grow watt uh, from the grow watt, I go down to my breaker panel uh, with my 110 volts, which I should have used like a Romex or something, but I've just got some, uh, some THH in here. And that runs into here now. 
keep in mind, I'm not an electrician. I'm showing you what I did. So notice that the panels miss, or the, the safety panels here is missing. But I've got my neutral wire, which is in red, running up to my neutral bus, bus bar here. And I've got my hot wire from the inverter <clears throat> running to this dual pole breaker. And it is energizing this bus bar right here in the back of the panel. Uh, that bus bar there is not energized currently. So I've got my two breakers that run out to my two outlets. Notice that the one on the right is a GFCI 20 amp, since it's got the extra slot. And this one is a 15 amp GFCI. And that's how I can run all my outputs. Now, if at some point I ever wanted to add on to this system, I certainly could. So these grow watt inverters can be run in parallel. You can do, so say you want to split phase, you want to get your 240 volts. You can run two of these, run a cable between them, have your 240. And that's why I did this breaker panel the way that I did, because all I'd need to do is add an additional hot wire into this other breaker. And now I've got a 30 amp breaker with 240 coming in on it. And that would give me 3000 watts on each of the legs or 6000 watts across the two hots from the two inverters. Um, and then of course I need to run, you know, some different outlets or some dedicated wiring to use that 240 uh, as opposed to 110. You could also run some additional outlets that, or, or, or move this breaker so that you've got, um, you know, an inverter on one out outlet and another inverter on the other outlet, just to spread your loads between the inverters. Uh, of course, adding another grow watt inverter also gets you more solar capacity. So each of these can do 3.8 kilowatts. Since it's doing a 48 volt battery, this is a lithium iron phosphate battery, I'll show you in just a second, uh, at 80 amps. So that's about 3.8 kilowatts that it can pull in. And if you add a second inverter, it connects to the same battery, not a separate battery, and you can get another 3.8 kilowatts. So something else to watch out for <clears throat> is that charge current, right? So your battery has to be rated for the charge current that you're pushing in. Uh, this battery that I've got is only 100 amp hours and the max charge rate is 1C, which would be 100 amps. So with one grow watt inverter, I can do 80 amps into it still within spec. If I added a second grow watt inverter and add too many panels, then I'd be over, uh, over, over current for the, that battery, and that would not be a good thing. Uh, let me show you what I've got for a battery real quick. we've got here are 16 lithium iron phosphate cells at 100 amp hours a piece. Uh, I punched some custom bus bars, I've got a video about that up on the channel. And these little connectors are just so that if I ever want to replace the BMS with a different type, uh, I don't have to go back and re-solder or re-bolt everything on. I can just pop the wires, these little Wago connectors, I can just pop the wires out and put new sense leads in. And right back here, the BMS that should be attached to something that's floating is my Ant BMS that can do the 16S. It's got under temperature, over temperature control, under voltage, over voltage for the pack, as well as for the individual cells. And that's what keeps everything safe. The power actually runs through that BMS, so it can handle about 140 amps continuous through its MOSFETs, whether it be charging or discharging and that will uh, cut the power from the negative side if any of those conditions exist. And that's programmable, it's, on, it's in the, the Bluetooth app. As it's charging, if it, once the, one of the cells reaches the 3.65 volts, you know, once it gets to 3.7, whatever it's set to, then the BMS will actually cut out. Now, ideally you would have the <clears throat> battery all top balanced and it would, the cells would all be hitting their max voltage at about the same time. And then you would have the grow watt charger set to charge up to like 90% or so, maybe like three and a half volts per cell, 3.45 volts per cell. And that way you're not hitting that very top of the cells anyway. And the inverter charger would actually stop charging before you hit any BMS cutoff because you want to avoid that. You do get some voltage spikes. I can see them on the grow watt, you know, it might be charging up to like 58 volts and it hit like 59 or 60 volts as it's trying to charge these batteries. Uh, so something to watch out for when you're setting things up. The GrowWatt has a lot of settings. You just go through the manual and make sure that uh, it's set up the way you want. These batteries are typically advertised as you want to use like 80% of their capacity uh, at a maximum. So you want to uh, cut off that bottom and the top and use the 80% in the middle. Don't, don't run them all the way down and don't charge them all the way up to 3.65 volts. 
So that's just an overview of this. I, I wanted to show you guys the, the individual pieces and I hope it's kind of laid out in a way where you can kind of tell what's connected to what. Uh, that it's not really all that complicated. This setup, if you wanted to go buy it, like, you don't even have to get it from me. You could get it for under three grand. Like, you can find these these panels are typically, you know, 60 bucks a pop locally, wherever you're at. If you happen to be here in the Texas, North Texas area, you know, I've got them for 60 bucks a piece. But uh, the, the cells, <clears throat> I mean, I've typically got cells in stock. Uh, but if you went straight to Alibaba and got cells, which is where these came from, you know, so, a battery like this, that's, that's the way I priced it, is if you just went straight to Alibaba and bought it. Uh, the inverter, you know, you can get those straight from Amazon, or if you want to grab one from me, you can. And then, you know, just your, your typical Lowe's purchase with your breaker panel and your outlets. So, nothing, nothing rocket science here. Uh, you just need to make sure that it's safe, you got the right fuses, breakers, and I think that's what is a, a hindrance to some people is not knowing what safety features to put in or what ratings to use and I think that's fair. It's, it's good to make sure that you've got that right. If you're able to draw out a system like this and say okay this is what I'm doing you know that would make it easier to take to your electrician friend and be like does this look right? Like this is this is what the panel says, this is how I'm configuring them and you're not asking them to then go and build the whole thing um, but you're asking them to verify hey uh, I think I've got this right and do you have any recommendations? That was kind of the idea with this is it's my build, I would be comfortable with running it, but I wanted to share it so that if you wanted to take it, take notes from it, uh, replicate it, have it verified by somebody and leave it yourself, then you can go for it.